I um, uh, so um, as uh, so this is a so this is a picture uh, of uh, this dreadful ERGS that uh, this acute respiratory disease uh, that affects the the distal lung and uh, and the idea that this devastating effect of the COVID nineteen and uh, its manifestations in the alveolus has focused really the attention of uh, viral interactions and as a target, primary target of the alveolar type two cells, as we can see in here. However, one thing that um, uh, it is important to say is that um, uh, this highly efficient human to human transmission makes uh, the type two cell as the very unlikely sole target of the COVID and then brings the attention of these multiple generations of airways that one can see in here. And that goes from actually the nose, the conduction airways from the nose up to the terminal bronchial so that in fact the real uh, 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 barrier. So that's an innate mechanism that we have of defense and that is uh, probably the first soldiers that we have in front of that. And indeed a viral RNA and uh, 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 high uh, viral loads have been observed in the nasal epithelium in the uh, uh, upper, uh, in the epithelium of the upper airways. And uh, bringing this, the, uh, 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 the attention to say that this is really uh, an important side of the initial infection. And also some think that when you're talking about perpetration, perpetration of this infection, uh, uh, the airways uh, may serve as a key reservoir for the virus spread uh, and the transmission, which is really, uh, uh, a very important issue to consider. Um, uh, indeed, uh, what has been interesting also is that the, um, uh, there's very recent uh, attention to uh, the airway epithelium, particularly from the nose uh, and the upper airways. And that comes from a, a single cell analysis of single cell RNA-seq data sets that actually brings uh, uh, the goblet cells and the ciliated cells, particularly in the nose, as a, uh, 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 as a site of high levels of expression of the AC2 and uh, of uh, the associated protease, the PRIMS2. Uh, uh, so this is to say of how, uh, 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 the, how important or uh, the potential uh, 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 use of these uh, airways uh, uh, systems to study uh, viral entry and uh, uh, viral interactions with the cellular components that may be important for the pathogenesis and potential therapeutics. And to say that this system that I am talking about in here uh, has been, in fact, we used it before for all different types of uh, assessment of uh, viral host interactions with this different virus that you can see in here in this diagram. Um, and uh, the principle of this to understand what that uh, the system is, is essentially that you take the airway progenitors, the adult progenitors of the airways of human, and uh, this can come from different sources, and uh, these progenitors are able to, in culture, uh, you are able to expand, and this is uh, this basal cells, these progenitor cells, um, expanded, they are expressing uh, uh, P63, which is the uh, main marker. And within a few days, what you have is that these progenitor cells, they will then differentiate into ciliated cells, as you can see here, secretory cells, and so on. Um, you can actually uh, uh, modulate cultural conditions to have, uh, uh, to change the balance of uh, the components of this airway epithelium, depending on what you want to study. And this is uh, what I just showed the ciliated cells. This is the, uh, when you want to expand uh, these basal cells to serve as a source of saying scaling up uh, uh, components that one can actually study later on. And these are the different sources that one can have. Uh, uh, in this case here, I'll explain this is done uh, from adult airways, uh, uh, organ donors, uh, adults. Um, in which you can actually take trachea or you can take bronchus or you can even get uh, intrapulmonary airways uh, and uh, you can isolate, uh, you can cut this, you, uh, you protease, you can isolate the uh, cells, expand them. Important, you can cryopreserve this, you can actually uh, um, expand uh, and go into several uh, passages maintaining these particular features. Uh, this is the other thing that we're doing. Um, 
is uh, um, I'm looking at some uh, aspects of uh, uh, immaturity, um, and, 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 but that can be also used for uh, uh, COVID research. For example, these are nasal brushes that we're taking from uh, the NICU patients uh, or nasal pharyngeal suction. So in this case, the, uh, the process is essentially, essentially the same. Uh, this is to show that we have success in passages and, and, and what is the success rate that we have for the growth of this. And this is to show um, <clears throat> uh, uh, the, uh, how it is that, how reproduce could do things. For example, um, uh, there is a study in here that uh, shows uh, a, 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 a good coherence between transcriptomics of the in vivo airway epithelium and this airway uh, uh, um, ALI cultures. Uh, this is another, uh, this is to say that this can be used to assess, for example, different types of injury, and this is done uh, comparing uh, exposure to cigarette. And very, very important is that this is a kind of personalized thing because you can take this uh, uh, progenitor cells from uh, cystic fibrosis uh, uh, patients and in culture, they will actually reproduce the disease when you compare, I mean, the disease meaning the epithelial phenotype uh, in, 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 uh, when you compare this to a normal. So this is uh, what a CF and this is what we see and this is a cell paper. Uh, evidence of periciliary liquid layer depletion, and this is to study the pathogenesis of, uh, uh, um, uh, of cystic fibrosis. I, in, in respect to um, <clears throat> uh, the preservation of, uh, say, AC2 and so on, here uh, is another study that shows that indeed the AC2 is preserved in this ALI cultures, and uh, they are in fact in the ciliated cells, and we see this beta tubulin as a marker of the uh, ciliated cells uh, expressing FOX J1. Um, this is essentially also saying that the SARS CoV and SP1, the replicase, is in the same way AP localized and coincides with sites of uh, the ciliated cells in this human airways that have been infected in vitro. So that uh, brings an important aspect to, more, uh, uh, um, to, to the study of these interactions, host uh, uh, pathogen interactions. This is EM, in fact, showing uh, how, uh, 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 how concentrated this uh, uh, COVID uh, is, in fact, in the ciliated cells, in the AP proportion, close to the basal bodies, and so on, and how they release it. And this is one of the things that is important to say of how it, that this could be the source for the continued and maybe amplification of the infection in these patients uh, uh, when we think about this as a reservoir in airways. So, in summary, what we have in here is a- Valentine, one minute. Yep. Yeah, that's my last one. My uh, primary organotypic airway epithelial uh, has uh, uh, cultures that can be used as a platform. One can use, as I said, uh, to study viral host interactions. One can um, uh, study uh, uh, aspects of epithelial cell behavior, the transcriptomics. So this is one of the things that uh, are, and particularly with drug testing, for example, one of the things that I, uh, I'm going to be collaborating with Andrea uh, in these studies, it, it is a versatile uh, uh, human and adult, uh, a human adult and neonate. One can actually have also a, 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 a region-specific sites, nasal, extra, interpulmonary areas. It can be, uh, quote, unquote, patient-specific in the sense that this uh, uh, progenitor cells preserve some of the intrinsic properties that uh, uh, the donor has or the the host has, and also mouse. Uh, uh, we actually have extensive studies of uh, using the systems to study different aspects of differentiation, repair, and so on in the mouse. And in fact, this is one of the uh, 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 collaborations that I'm going to have with uh, Michael Shin, who is going to be looking at uh, sex-specific effects. So uh, just a very brief uh, uh, thanks to uh, a lot of the, the pediatric uh, the neonatal things have been developed by Jessica Shu in my lab and uh, uh, for, in collaboration with the neo, uh, neonatology we have with Bajin as well, uh, collaborations with this. And this is also, uh, the systems being used and developed or expanded in the Cardozo and the new lab. Thank you. Uh, right now we have one question from uh, Andy Marks. Well, yes. do, do, you, uh, do you see any virus in endothelial cells? This is a system that is essentially epithelial. So what we're seeing here 
is we are isolating the epithelium. We are looking at uh, a barrier. We're looking at the uh, side of uh, the uh, with the environment from the outside. So no, we do not use. We do not have endothelium as part of this component. Uh, Robin uh, Gatrell. Hey, um, I just had a quick question. Um, as this virus tends to affect children differently from adults, do you have any other pediatric samples aside from the neonatal that you can compare to both the adults as well as the neo neonatal? We have not yet approached this. Uh, uh, this was, a, 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 I was just wanted to demonstrate what the system is. We're actually using, uh, we're studying uh, differences uh, in uh, differentiation and in uh, repair of premies versus term. Uh, this is in fact the primary uh, use of this as of right now. I'm, uh, I believe that this uh, can be used for, to assess uh, different uh, other questions like the ones that you have mentioned. Um, I don't see any additional questions. 